That's right, myself, an 8 handicapper, and my pal Josh, who plays off 28, shot under par gross in a competition at Sun Peaks Golf Club. In this video, you'll see our preparation for the two-person scramble, how we actually broke par on the course, and where we placed in the competition. Our preparation starts by getting familiar with the course on a practice round the day before. I've played here previously, but Josh hasn't. I'm not going to lie to you, Paul. I thought I was coming on this trip just to film. I didn't know I was going to be actually playing a tournament. In this round, I shot an 84 from the back tees and Josh carded a 95 from the whites, which is where we'll be playing from in the tournament. Yes. Good man. At 5,400 yards, this isn't a long course at all, but the front nine is incredibly tight and is well guarded. The back nine is a lot more modern and is pretty wide open. Two completely different styles of golf. If I can make it through safely, just play safe shots on that front nine and then open up a little bit more on the back, it's gonna be a good round. The biggest difference between us as a partnership will be experience. Josh hasn't even played in a competition before and only just got a handicap right before our practice round. We're on a trip across British Columbia filming a bunch of videos at incredible courses. And this tournament popped up at the last second, so we thought, hey, why not? Make sure you subscribe to my channel to catch those videos coming out in the future. Look, it might become a bit apparent that I'm a little bit better at golf than Josh, but how do we work with this to get the lowest score possible? In a scramble, the most simple tactic is to get one ball in play and then take the risks after that. Our game plan was to give Josh some easy shots and just focus on keeping the ball in bounds. This should then allow me to recklessly attack greens with my driver. And the most important thing to remember is that higher handicappers are always guaranteed to do something special in a scramble. But executing this plan is easier said than done. So we used our practice round to identify our weaknesses. My tee shots with the longer clubs are going left. Like big left. With this course rewarding position more than distance a lot of the time, my lack of accuracy with these clubs really hurt me in my practice round. And the putting wasn't exactly on fire either. But in a scramble format, of course, it's not that important to string shots together to get a good score. So that pressure that I impose on myself is probably going to be removed. Josh's weaknesses, on the other hand, were due simply because, well, you know, he doesn't play as much golf as I do, which a lot of people can relate to. It's not his main focus in life, so things like getting his short game dialed are going to be a bit more of a challenge. His iron striking, though, was pretty solid, and it was useful to see that his club distances were actually pretty similar to mine. How important do you think it is for us to have matching hats? Oh, that's what's going to win this tournament. So I shared some things with him that would make his life a bit less stressful. I noticed that shots would go bad when he aggressively tried to hit the golf ball. And after chilling out a bit and just allowing the ball to get in the way of his swing, we had some less wild results. Go and get another ball. Of course, I'm no pro here, but it was about trying to get him around the course with as little stress as possible. When it comes to chipping, he was just trying to use his sand wedge from just about everywhere. Instead, I put an 8 iron in his hands and I just showed him how to do a really simple bump and run by using the technique of tilting the club up a bit and using more of a putting stroke. And speaking of putting, I noticed that he was interlocking his fingers on his putting grip. Now, this probably isn't wrong to do, but it didn't look comfortable. Hold your hands up. Let's yeah. try. You're holding it too hard. Oh, what? It's still not right. Hold on. His other weakness was this classic trait of just watching the ball as it goes towards the hole, which was opening up his club face at impact. Now, this is so hard to get over. I mean, I even do it as well on short putts, but we practiced for a bit and saw some improvement. Much better. By now, I'm sure you're wondering, I mean, how did these guys shoot under par with these, let's say, suboptimal games? Getting things started, Josh's safety 7-iron was completely crushed and he actually ended up running out of fairway. Learning from this, I used my 8-iron and got us in play. Now in a scramble, you're able to drop your balls within one club length of where your ball lies. And I used this to give us the best line in possible as we were blocked out by some trees. Now I was feeling a little bit in the groove already and decided to go out of turn, but actually it paid off and I got us on the dance floor pretty close to the flag. 
Ooh. Yeah, that's all good. Josh made solid contact, but just couldn't bend it around those trees. Good bounce. Putting first for us, Josh just missed the birdie. Ooh. And after watching this putt, I thought I knew exactly how it was going to break, but we just couldn't get off to that dream start and ended up with the par. Par on the first. Good start. We'll definitely take a par. Also, the other thing, we have to take at least five tee shots of each of us. A really good tactic is to just try and get them done as soon as possible. Takes away all the stress. Josh pipes a five iron out of the middle of the club face. Josh! But it drifts just into the rough. Oh. Bunker! My tee shot goes pretty much the same direction, but into the bunker. I should have been more aggressive on reflection, but we take Josh's shot and I played caddy with Josh's gap wedge. Can we just look at the towel here? Oh, okay, yeah. towel. Great, great towels there at some piece. Not sponsored. Which he unfortunately hooks Ooh. into these oh, houses. Oh dear. That hit concrete. I thought I'd nailed my shot, but we are way past the flag. Thinking we we're about to get yelled at, someone actually was being nice and threw Josh's ball back to us. Oh, we got Ooh. it back. Hey! His putt comes up short and I get way too aggressive with my effort. So we take Josh's ball, which he calmly rolls in for our second par. Josh, I can't believe you just hold that putt for par on second. It was that 10 minutes of uh, lesson that I got just before. The nervy tee shot on three gets the better of our clutch play here, and we have a wet golf ball. I whipped out the safety hybrid and it looked like we were in the middle of the fairway. To stick to our planned tactics, we need Josh to get us safely further up the fairway. That is money. Which he does perfectly bring me up to pull out the hybrid and push the send button. And oh boy, did I send it. Just look at this slinger. Look at it, pin high. Josh go, unfortunately go, catches go. the chip a bit heavy, but I'm able to pop mine a touch closer. Break. Oh, I didn't break. I just about roll it in for the birdie yes. and we go one under. Oh, how do we go birdie there? Who cares, no pictures on the scorecard, mate. The fourth actually has an opportunity to go for it in one. So Josh gets us safely in play, ready for me to have a crack at it. But I could not have messed it up any worse and I hook it way left. A front pin makes it a bit tricky and Josh catches it a touch thin, going over the back. I pop one on the green and we have another birdie putt. But it's pretty long Go. and with these greens on the slower side, Go. the best we can do is lag up and tap in for our par. Go on. Go. I told Josh just to visualize hitting the middle of the green on the short par three fifth. Gap wedge for both of us. And he delivers. That's a great looking shot, mate. Oh, baby. I try to do the same thing, but push it a bit right. Whoa, taking yours, Josh. We're gonna get a two, and we're gonna get some money. If we get a two, leave a like on the video. Oh, subscribe to the channel. Oh. Our dreams of a two literally come up short. And we stay one under par. Oof. The sixth is a par five. I really thought we should be getting on in two. Josh gets us in play, but the good landing area is just out of reach for me. Both of our lies ended up being kind of similar, so we took my ball and I figured that we could easily leave about 80 yards in for our third shot. Mm, not ideal. Not ideal at all. But both of us completely mess it up and we blow it. Listen to that compression. Josh job. has pulled it out the bag again right it. and it looked great. I, on the other hand, push it right and heartbreakingly, it was pin high, just not on the green. Uh, right here. Josh. You did it. Bloody did it, you little legend, you. Good thing Josh's okay. approach ended up being pretty close, but unfortunately, we miss out on another birdie. But at least I rolled it past the hole this time. Take a par, you know, nothing wrong. Josh gets us on the back of the green off the tee, so I get a bit more aggressive and go at the front pin. We narrowly miss the two we are hunting for, but at least I can just... Oh, I mean, come on, what was that Josh? about? Nothing. Oh, 
Good job we've got Josh. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank you, partner. The eighth demands a well-placed tee shot so that you can actually get a good look at the guarded green. We won't talk about Josh's effort, but pure ham and eggs here as I'm in position A. Those rolls are reversed on the next shot as Josh gets us on in regulation. It's just on the green, just there on the left. Oh, God. And I catch it fatter than 2% milk. Long and sliding, this putt had about zero chance of dropping in. Just like my short putts, I guess, but uh, good job Josh is there to save Hi, the Josh. day again. Yep. Yes! Roll. That's two now. That's, oh my god, two count plus, it. Plus you, we take nope. Josh's safe tee shot as I can't nope. seem to hit the driver straight at all. Nope. You don't need to see his approach, but I hit our chosen ball to the back of the green, but I did get a bit nervous about where it went. Safety putts galore for our third, and what do you know, I actually roll one in. Miracles do happen. Where did you guys come from? Uh, Unfortunately, the wrong. Is this a trail? No. Well, there is a trail, but. <laughs> While you check out this guy on a mountain bike riding with his dog in a backpack, I'll tell you what we were thinking. We were thinking that the winner would be about six under par, so at one under, I was convinced we'd probably be about mid pack. So, in many ways, that helped us with our nerves, and we were pretty chill. With the back nine opening way up, it was time to start warming up the drivers. And Josh puts yes, us safely in the middle. On my tee shot, Go. I put everything that I had Go. into the tank and it oh, looked great. I've outdriven Josh by a fair amount, oh, so I ended up taking my tee shot. And dependable Josh delivers his job perfectly. And I get crushed by a bad light. That was totally within range. I just, it just buried itself when I dropped it down. Go. The short game gets turned on and Josh rolls in the birdie putt to get us to two under for the round, starting the back nine perfectly. Get in! The drivers both get hot again and with two Bounce solid straight. drives under our belts, we are both starting to feel a bit more confident. Uh, that'll do. That, gave, that was all the motivation I needed, you know? And I took that personally. What other lines is he saying? <laughs> Josh catches the approach fat, but 60 yards is my bread and butter. And with a delightful check of the ball, we are stiff. And I finish it off to earn us back-to-back -back birdies. How would I describe that hole? Mm. Peachy. Now the 12th is a golf hole that gives me nightmares, even playing off forward tees. And that really shows as both of us almost threw the whole round away. We may as well have just thrown it at those trees, really. Just barely. But we get up there to find that Josh's ball has bounced back out. So we take a severe dose of medicine and just get this thing back in play. What follows is both of us completely clutching up on our third shots. What a shot. Yeah. Finally, 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 we needed that. And we're both on the green with at least a chance of saving par. Two solid shots. Team Hack is back in the game. But this putt is not short. However, can you remember what I said at the beginning of this video? Uh, apparently, the higher handicap player always comes in clutch for the long putt. That's what I'm planning on doing today. Break. Break. Break! What a putt! Oh my god! Yeah. Did we not say that was where I was going to come in clutch? Was the, the long putt? Oh! Totally called that. Totally called it. And the excitement might have got the better of Josh on the next tee. Not bad. Luckily, my three wood puts us in an ideal spot to attack the green. The superstar makes comeback shot of the century for the fourth time this round. That could be really tasty. Oh, he's done it again! He's done it again! And I can only try and hit it as close as he did. With all the excitement going on, I almost missed filming Josh doing this. Get in! Dude, didn't record. Did I did record, oh thank god. <laughs> That's right, this pair of distinctly average golfers are four under par. We might have something here, folks. A tricky par three for the 14th, and we both missed the green right. 
but Josh's magic touch around the green saves us. So good. Yes. Come on. Go. And what do you know? Oh, I did it again! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can this guy's putter be stopped? I don't think so. We're on. Momentum is very, very strong yeah. going into the uphill 15. Can we execute the team plan perfectly. Unfortunately, Josh's solid approach comes up short and I miss the green left, but pin high. Now, all we have to do is get this close and get out with a par. But this was the first real team blunder go, of the day. Go. And we quite frankly blow it. Go. A bogey and a scramble just shouldn't exist. But here we are walking off this green with a five. Not even Josh's magic putter can save us. <sighs> Would it prove to be crucial? 16 is the highest elevation tee box in the whole of British Columbia, Canada. And with only needing to hit a three wood onto the green, this really should be a birdie hole. My tee shot is good enough and we are pin high with what looks like a straightforward chip. With Josh's chip completely That's confusing me, I do the worst thing I could do and limp That's a not pathetic bad at all. chip onto the green. Roll. Roll. And we actually end Sit. up taking Sit. Josh's even though it's Sit. on the fringe. And we end up with a par, but it, it really felt like a drop shot on this hole. What's the, what's the play on the 17th? Gap wedge, mate. 110? Yeah, 110 is spinning to the breeze. 17 is a straightforward affair and we both knock it on the green, but unfortunately oh, no. we don't walk off with that two that we've been yearning for, with both our putts coming up short. Hit it on the heel of the put putter and I immediately knew I'd missed it. Didn't even have to look at it. I'm sorry I also went, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you hit it. I, <laughs> I, was, yeah. I feel really bad about that. I felt like we needed to attack this last hole, but it's fraught with danger left and right off the tee. I really needed Josh to put one in the middle, and unfortunately, he hooks it right into the hazard. But instead of playing safe, I stuck to the original plan and it paid off. Needless to say, I was stoked. Now, with 180 yards left into this par 5, the door was wide open. I wanted to keep the momentum going, so I played first, but Man, did I mess this up and hook it left into the trouble. Josh clutches up one more time and just gets us near yes. the green. Thank you. It's an easy. That'll do. Our third shot isn't that hard or that easy. Go. Go. Cut but we both make a hash of it, and instead of the birdie we should have made, we make par and finish with a score of 69. Yes! Oh, I'm so glad I didn't have to do that part. <laughs> That's three under. Now, obviously, we were pretty happy about this until we found out the overall result. Good score, though. <sighs> no way! Oh, well, that was fun. We had lost the tournament by one shot. We finished second and actually went on countback, which never happens to me, but at least I wasn't letting our second place get to me. We were 180 yards away. <laughs> In second place with a 69, also winning the retro, is Paul Payson and Joss Boyd. And the winners of the first Sun Peaks Double Turns out the husband and wife team that we were playing with were the winners. They were lovely people, and at least we weren't playing for a trophy or Oh, come on, don't kick a man while he's down. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you on the course.